Okay, so let's take a look at um, two of the questions on the quadric surfaces handout. We're looking at considering equations that look like what's in this second cell here. Um, we have z squared equals ax squared plus by squared plus k. And the first case we want to consider is k equals zero. And then we'll come back and come and look for uh, when k is positive. And so to start out, so we need to put in z as some fixed thing. So let's say z equals d. And remember, k is 0. That's set up down later in our Desmos worksheet. And I'm going to share this Desmos uh, um, worksheet so you can play with this yourself. So notice what happens. D is our stand-in for Z, so we're looking at our contours or our level curves. And as we come in towards zero, notice that these ellipses get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then pinch off to just the origin at D equals zero, and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if we change A and B, really all that does is squish the ellipse in different ways. So let's leave that for the moment. Now, if we want to look at traces, things get a little bit harder. So if we want to look at um, the x equals c trace, you might try to put this equation in, z squared equals a c squared plus b y squared plus k. Desmos doesn't like that. Um, as I put in the note here, we need x and y to be the plotting variables, and so we're going to just swap out that z for an x. And so now this x-axis is really our z-axis, and this y-axis is still our y-axis. Um, so we see hyperbola, and as we just moves out, and then it pinches in, and we get to zero, we really get two crossing lines. And if you come in and put c equal to zero into this equation in the green cell here, remembering that k is zero, you really have x squared equals b y squared, or z squared equals b y squared. And so you square root that, um, and you get plus or minus, and it's linear. And so you really do get two lines like you should expect um, there. And we continue for negatives. And well, let's go back and play with our a and b sliders. Just like before, they're just changing sort of the shape of the hyperbola, but they're not making it be not a hyperbola or something like that. Um, so now let's put in the y equals f traces. So we would like to have z squared. Right? So we're thinking z squared equals ax squared plus bf squared plus k. Again, Desmos won't plot this, so let's put in y for our z. And again, we see hyperbolas that when we get down to f or y equals 0, pinch us off. And then more hyperbolas. OK, so what does this shape look like? Well, when x is 0, if we slice through it, we're going to see two crossing lines. Right? This was the x equals c. The green is the x equals c shape um, uh, trace. And so we're going to see hyperbolas that pinch down to a line, crossing lines. Similarly, when we slice the y direction, or for fixed values of y, the traces in the x direction, we see hyperbolas that pinch down. And our level curves, going back up here, changing the value of d, which is our z, we have ellipses that pinch down to a single point. So in looking at what our options are, we're really looking at the elliptic that in so you can see it. We're really looking at the elliptic cone because if we slice horizontally, we look at the contours, we see circles or ellipses. If we take traces by cutting this cone vertically, we're going to see hyperbolas, and you can actually see the hyperbolas traced out on this graphic from Mathematica. But when we get right down to the origin, we just see the lines crossing because the hyperbolas pinch together. 
Okay, now let's consider what happens. Finally, let's go back here and let's make k be positive. I'll make k be 3. I'm going to turn off these other ones and let's start again with the z equals d contours. And so we'll start up here and so ellipses looking the same, looking the same, looking the same, looking the same, looking... Oh, now we got down to around 1.6, 1 1.7 and it's gone. And we don't have anything until we get to minus 1.6 or minus 1.7. And so we we don't have anything. It's simply, you know, what's going on? Well, so what is our k value? Our k value is 3. If we come up to this equation and we put 0 here and 3 here, we move that over minus 3, and we look at what our a's and b's are, Let's make this simple. Let's go down to A is 1 and B is 1. And then things sort of disappear around 1.5. And that's really because we're looking at um, an equation that has no solutions because we're looking at x squared plus y squared equals um, like minus 3 when d equals 0, and that's totally nonsense until we get out far enough that d squared is bigger than this 3, um, we don't have anything. So there are no level curves for d in this sort of intermediate range. I'm just going to move these out so we get funnier shapes. Okay, so let's come in here now and start looking at the traces. And so we're going to look at the x equal to c trace, which again means that this is now our z-axis and this is our y-axis. So in some sense we really want to be looking at this sort of tilted sideways. Um, and so what happens as we change c, our x's, we come in and oh, they, they don't come in all the way. And then they, they go out and sort of we get in here around zero, and we're at zero, and then we start pushing out again. Interesting. Okay, so now let's come down here and turn on the blue one, which is our uh, y equals f, and so this is still our x-axis, and this is our z-axis now, and we again see hyperbolas that come in, but not all the way. Let's just move the... Yeah, okay, so k positive doesn't really matter what our k is. So, let's recap. We had this strange thing where the level curves disappear for a while and come back. So, this is telling us that our surface really has two parts. And then we're seeing in the traces are hyperbolas in both directions. And so let's bring in our image options here. So, well, the fact that we have two parts kind of says, is it this or is it this? Well, here we see hyperbolas, but we don't see hyperbolas in the other directions. We see like two lines, that's kind of weird. But here we see hyperbolas when we do the traces in the y direction with x fixed, and then here when we fix um, y and let x vary, we see hyperbolas again, and we see this gap where we don't have any um, surface. And so that gives us the hyperboloid of two sheets. In that case, um, and so hopefully that gives you an idea of how to make Desmos do some of these things. Let's just quickly come down here and let's let our k slider um, let's let it go negative as well and see what changes with that. Um, so when we make k negative, let's see what happens here. Um, in particular, the contours, notice the level curves, we shrink down, but we don't do like the cone where at zero we disappeared. We've got sort of a belt on and then we start expanding again. Um, we do still see Oh, now look at this. We see a 
jump where our hyperbolas sort of come together and then change directions in our traces for both directions. And so that should lead us towards thinking about the hyperboloid of one sheet. We've got that belt here. We're seeing hyperbolas that open up out here. And then we get in, and when we're around here, we're seeing hyperbolas that open to the left and right. Um, and similarly here, hyperbolas that open up and down. And then when we're in the middle here, we have hyperbolas that open out. And so let's see what happens. Okay, open out, open up and down, open out again. Let's see what goes on in this direction, open up and down, open out, open up and down again. So that all lines up and gives us some different options there uh, to see the hyperboloid of one sheet coming out of that one.